Our case today is from the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals and is the case of Micah Jessup versus the city of Fresno. In this case, the police during a search warrant took money. They didn't take the money for purposes of evidence. They didn't take the money for the purposes of civil asset forfeiture. They took the money, it appears, in order to just line their own pockets. And so they sued, arguing that the police don't have the right to do this. And the Court of Appeals upheld qualified immunity. They said that there was no clear rule that said that the uh, police could not just steal stuff from someone's home. So we're going to read this decision and read how it's legal for the police to commit theft or something. I, I don't know. Let's get started. Micah Jessup and Brittany Ashan appeal in order granting a motion for summary judgment on a defense of qualified immunity. The city of Fresno and Fresno police officers filed a motion in action alleging that the city's officers violated the 4th and 14th Amendments when they stole appellant's property during the execution of a search and search and seizure pursuant to a warrant. At the time of the incident, there was no clearly established law holding that officers violate the 4th or 14th Amendment when they steal property seized pursuant to a warrant. For that reason, the city's officers are entitled to qualify immunity. So according to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, there was no clear rule that police officers can't steal stuff. Okay. As part of an investigation into illegal gambling machines in Fresno, California, the city's officers executed a search warrant at three of Appellant's properties. The warrant, signed by the Fresno County Superior Judge, authorized that the seizure of all the monies, negotiable instruments, securities, or other things of value furnished or intended to be furnished by any person in connection with illegal gambling or money laundering that may be found on the premises and monies and records of said monies derived from the sale or control of the machines. If city officers found the property listed, they were to retain it in their custody, subject to order of the court as provided by law. Following the search, the city's officers gave appellant an inventory sheet stating that they had seized approximately $50,000 from the properties. Applicants allege, however, the officers actually seized $151,000 in cash and another $125,000 in right coins. So that would be uh, faking official records, which I'd like to note is also a crime. When you fake records, that is a crime. Did the police get charged with that? I'm guessing not. Applicants claim the city officer stole the difference between the amount listed on the inventory sheet and the actual amount seized from the properties. Appellant brought the suit in the Eastern District of California, alleging, among other things, the claims violated, the, violated 42 U.S.C. 1983 for the violations. The city's officers moved for summary judgment based on qualified immunity. The district court granted the motion and dismissed all the claims. It's a little frustrating. The doctrine of qualified immunity protects government officials from liability for civil damages insofar as their conduct does not violate clearly established statutory or constitutional right of which a person would know. In determining whether an officer is entitled to qualified immunity, we consider whether there has been a violation of a constitutional right and whether the right was clearly established at the time of the conduct. The parties dispute whether the city's officer's actions violate the Fourth Amendment. The officers insist that because they seized the applicant's assets pursuant to a warrant, they did not violate the Fourth Amendment. Applicants, by contrast, argue that the city's officer's alleged theft was an unreasonable seizure. Although the courts were formally required to determine where the plans had been derived of a constitutional right before proceeding as to consider where that right was clearly established, the Supreme Court has since instructed that courts may determine which prong of qualified immunity they should analyze first. Addressing the second prong before the first is especially appropriate where a court will rather quickly and easily decide there's no violation of clearly established law. A defendant violates an individual's clearly established rights only when the state of the law at the time of the incident provided a fair warrant to the defendant that the conduct was unconstitutional. We do not require a case directly on point, but existing precedent must have placed the statutory constitutional question beyond debate. So apparently, according to the court's reasoning here, the question of whether or not it's legal to steal property is a debatable question. Okay. Thus, the contours of the right must be sufficiently clear that a reasonable official would understand that what he's doing violates that right. We may look to unpublished decisions in the law of other circuits in addition to our precedent. We've never, addressed the, we've never addressed whether the theft of property covered by terms of search warrant and seized pursuant to that warrant violates the Fourth Amendment. The only circuit that's addressed this question, the Fourth Circuit, concluded in an unpublished decision that it does. The case involved federal agents who failed to return a watch after execution of a search warrant. Relying on the Supreme Court's decision in a unit called, case called United States versus Place, the court reasoned the Fourth Amendment regulates all inferences, interference with an individual's possessory interest in property, not merely the initial acquisition of the possession. Thus, because the agent's theft of the watch interfered with interest, it violates the Fourth Amendment. 
Although we've never addressed this precise question, our decision in Bauer versus Beck is instructive. Their officers impounded the plaintiff's vehicle pursuant to a statute that authorized seizure of vehicles when the defendant had a suspended driver's license. When the plaintiff later appeared at a hearing with proof that she was the registered owner of the vehicle and had a valid license, however, the government refused to release the vehicle to her. We reasoned the Fourth Amendment was implicated by the government's actions because the Fourth Amendment does not become irrelevant once an initial seizure has run its course. Because the exigency that justified the seizure vanished once the seizure, once upon the vehicle arrived at the impound and showed up with proof of ownership and a valid license, we held the government's impound of vehicle constitutes a seizure that required compliance with the rules. This reasoning suggests that the city's officers' alleged theft of the property could be also be implicated by the Fourth Amendment. Although the officers seized the appellant's money and coin pursuant to a lawful warrant, their continued retention and alleged theft of the property might be a Fourth Amendment seizure because the Fourth Amendment does not become irrelevant once the initial seizure has run its course. Lord. The facts, however, vary in legal significance way beyond those of the current case. Whereas that case concerned the government's impoundment of a vehicle, applicants argued that they stole property. And while the case involved seizure of property pursuant to an exception to a warrant requirement, the city's officer seized the property pursuant to a warrant that authorized the seizure of the items allegedly stolen. Even if the facts and reasoning of the case would dictate the outcome of the case, however, it was not clearly established law when the city's officers executed the search warrant. The city's officers seized the property in 2013, but this case was not signed until 2017. For that reason, we need not decide whether the city's officers violated the Fourth Amendment. The lack of any case or controlling authority or case of persuasive authority on constitutional question compels the conclusion at the time that the law was not clearly established. Although the city's officers have re rec Although the city's officers ought to recognize that alleged theft of money and rare coins was morally wrong, they did not have clear notice it violated the Fourth Amendment, which, as noted, is a different question. Okay. The Fourth Circuit's unpublished decision in the case called Mom, the only case law at the time of the incident, pursuant to this, did not put the constitutional question beyond debate. Nor is this one of those rare cases in which the constitutional right at issue is defined by a standard that's so obvious we must conclude that qualified immunity is inapplicable, even without a case on point. You know, personally, I would think thou shall not steal has been pretty firmly established in our jurisprudence since well before America or even common law was a thing. But, you know, I, I guess somehow not so much. It was not clearly established that this was wrong. Yeah. We recognize the allegation of theft by police officers and most certainly the theft of over $225,000 is deeply disturbing. Where that conduct violates the Fourth Amendment, prohibition on unreasonable search and seizure, however, would not be clear to a reasonable officer. Applicants have failed to show that it was clearly established the city's officers alleged conduct violated the Fourth Amendment. Accordingly, we hold the city's officers are protected by qualified immunity against the Fourth Amendment claim. We simplify... We sympathize with appellants. The alleged theft of their personal property by police officers sworn to uphold the law. If city's officers committed the act alleged, their actions were morally reprehensible. And also, I'd argue illegal because they took it for their own personal gain, which is like conversion. It's theft from the government. It's, it's the gov it was the government's money in so much as their right to hold it while they were figuring it out. So they stole from the government. So that's a theft. So it's not just morally wrong. It's illegal. It's crime. I'm pretty confident. Not all conduct that's improper or morally wrong, however, violates the Constitution because appellants did not have a clear established Fourth or Fourteenth Amendment right to be free from theft of property. Okay, the city's, the city's officers are entitled to qualified immunity. Okay, so the United Circuit Court of Appeals says it was not clearly established at the time that if the police stole from you, that was illegal. So... Yeah, this is a thing that apparently existed. So, yeah, I, I think that this is as good a reason as any to reconsider the idea of qualified immunity. I don't know that the doctrine should completely disappear, but when qualified immunity allows for this kind of stuff to occur, the doctrine is obviously too expansive. So if there's a way to constrain it, I'm interested in constraining it. I don't know if it should disappear completely because there are like heat of the moment judgment calls, but man, oh, man. This is like, let's steal stuff, cannot fall within the category of a gray area, to paraphrase the Fourth Circuit in the other case. So I, I don't know that we should do away with qualified immunity altogether, but this is as good as reason for, as any for the Supreme Court to reconsider whether or not it should be further construed or perhaps even done, with, done away with completely, because this, uh, this is not good stuff, guys. This, is, this needs to stop.